I can tell just by looking at you that you're a smart cookie. How good of an idea do you think it would be if I said you're going to do one type of exercise training the rest of your life? Never anything different. It's obviously absurd, right? But for some reason, we think like that's a good idea when it comes to nutrition. Right? We're going to eat this many grams of protein, this much fat, this much carbohydrate, and that's what all of us should do regardless of what we're doing with our exercise training or other parts of our life. And obviously, that's completely absurd. And so I don't teach in my nutrition classes specific numbers to eat. What I teach is concepts, and the reason is I believe in uh, an approach that's called periodized nutrition. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through the concept as well as how to apply it, and it will, of course, include very specific numbers for how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates to eat for things like gaining muscle, losing fat, peak performance, and even in the off-season. You excited? Let's go. Now, before I do this really quickly, I have to give credit. This is not my concept. Uh, Louise Burke and her team out of Australia is fantastic work here. Another thing I need to acknowledge, there are a lot of different ways to do it. And I don't necessarily do these ones at all times, but this is a good example. So I would encourage you not to memorize these numbers, but just think about the concepts and the logic behind it, and then apply appropriately and modify based on your context and your situation. So I know I'm asking you to do what people hate the most in this world, and think, right? There's also other things like carb cycling, backloading, and then there's a whole other array of different ways to play with this. But this is, I think, the easiest way to understand it from the from the very beginning, and so I'll, I'll just teach it like it's the periodized nutrition approach. So basically, what, what Luis and, and their team, I assume their goal was, is to say, hey, look, we do need to modify how we're eating based on different types of training. And so what I've done is I've shown you, I'm going to show you and go through four different theoretical goals, gaining mass, losing fat in competition, probably in the middle of like competition season, or say you got a hard wrestling tournament or you're competing three or four times in a week or something like that. And then non-competition, so this could be immediately after the season or whatnot. And then at the, at the top, of course, I've got the different macronutrients, and I'll show you how these things break down. So we'll start off with our very first category, muscle gain. So what do we do with our fat? Well, most of the time, I actually feel like these numbers are pretty solid. Oh, and by the way, uh, these are my numbers I use, not necessarily what they've originally published in their great research on periodized nutrition. So these are the ones I like, but they're pretty close usually. So... Somewhere in the neighborhood of a gram per kilogram uh, in terms of fat. So if you're a 100 kilogram person, you'd be 220 pounds. Uh, you'd be eating like 100 grams of fat or so a day. Maybe even a little bit less is totally fine there. Of course, you can go higher. Yes, you can go lower, but these are the numbers that I like to stick to. When it comes to fat loss, though, uh, this is... And I've explained this in a bunch of different videos, uh, even a five minute version. If you want to just go quickly take a look at how much, I think it's called how much protein, fat, and carbohydrates to eat, something like that. Um, I, I do find carbohydrates and, and fat are the easiest ones to reduce when you're trying to reduce calories. So because of that, I don't want to drop fat way off the earth. I don't want to go from 100 grams a day to 20 grams a day or crazy like that. But I just want to keep it on that lower end of the limit, maybe even a little bit lower not much more though, right? So we're not talking crazy reductions. In fact, this is a major mistake folks often make with fat loss is they just cut calories way too low, way too fast. So I go from eating four eggs for breakfast in the morning to eating two. Well, you've cut your calories in half. That's a really bad idea. So just keep it at the lower end of the spectrum. Now, when you're in the middle of competition phase, in season or got a lot, you're just competing or training really, really, really hard. This could be fight camp as well um, for those fighting athletes that I work with. We're going to go give you the same or to even almost double this number. So we can get really, really, really high with fat simply because their calories need to increase. And fat is a fantastic source of calories. It uh, helps us absorb fat or uh, absorb vitamins. It's really important for hormonal regulation and a bunch of other stuff. So we will sometimes go way, 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 way up on that if we just need more calories. And then, and then of course, when we come back up from non-competition, we're going to go back down again. And that's just simply because we don't want to continue to eat like we're in season when we leave the season or else we're going to get fat. And yes, I'm sorry, keto friends, but if you overeat fat, guess what? It vanishes to thin air and nothing happens. Right. Come on now. Come on now. It's not magic. Moving on to our next category here, carbohydrates. This is the range I like to stick to in general is four to seven grams. And I found it actually works pretty well for muscle gain. 
uh, as well. So I, I don't usually deviate from that. Uh, we will increase their calories, but we don't need to go crazy numbers here. We don't need to be going, uh, you know, 900 grams of cal carbohydrate a day to simply gain some muscle. You'll probably blow your stomach to pieces with the fiber uh, if you're not careful there. Fat loss, though, we're going to head it down. Now, again, notice we're not dropping carbohydrates off the table. We're not going no carb. You can if you want, but you don't have to. There's no good reason to think you have to reduce carbohydrates that much. If you want to lose fat, you just simply have to reduce calories. They got to come from somewhere. And I don't like pulling them from protein. So I don't necessarily drop too much fat. I don't necessarily drop too many carbohydrates. I just keep both at the lower end of those spectrums, maybe slightly lower. This is not a huge adjustment. I mean, if you're going from five grams of carbs per kilogram body weight and you go from five to three, this is very manageable. You don't want to go from seven grams to one. You're going to feel terrible, and you just, you just don't need to do it. And so we just end, edge these things down a little bit lower, a couple of bites less here, as, you know, a couple of portion sizes just crunched down just a little bit. Again, we're talking small reductions here at most. In competition, depending on what sport or activity you're in, I mean, you can go nuts with these things, especially if the competition is short-term. Now, I wouldn't recommend going to 15 grams per kilogram of body weight, if your season is eight months long, like a baseball season or something, you're going to get fat, right? Not because carbs make you fat, but because calories do. If you triple your calorie intake of carbohydrates, then you're going to add more weight. So the seven up to 15 is more of something like an extreme endurance event that's lasting, Tour de France or, you know, something like that. But for the most part, if I'm, say, uh, in a short competition window, say we got Olympic trials and uh, we're going to wrestle, you know, potentially five to six times over the course of a week. Um, and it weights okay, then we are going to want to go really high in carbohydrate. Okay, now if we got to make weight, we'll actually lower protein and, and lower fat a lot, but we're going to keep the carbohydrates really, really high. If you're in a sport where weights don't matter and you can afford to just go nuts with your carbohydrate and you are going to compete multiple times in a two or three week span, you're fine going pretty high on your carbohydrates and it won't have a negative um, result. And then, of course, once we leave season, we've got to come back down. And you'll see these numbers match up pretty well with the fat loss. Because that's really what we're doing. Uh, we're presuming post-competition here in our non-competition phase, our activity levels have gone way down. And so our food needs to come down with it as well. We see this classically as a phrase that is potentially sensitive, so I won't use it. But classically with folks who maybe played a sport or two or three in high school, get to college, don't do it anymore. But yet they continue to use the same eating patterns. And it's not like your metabolism or your hormones shift that dramatically from age 18 to 18.5. Right? They don't change that much. What happens is your physical activity just plummets, but you continue to eat all of the carbohydrates and fat like you've been eating as a 16, 17, and 18 year old who's playing all these sports. And so you tend to um, plump up a touch. <laughs> you know what I mean. So in terms of protein here, uh, muscle gain, honestly, I, I don't really ever go that low in terms of 1.2. I'm probably never going to recommend less than 1.5. And I mean, to be totally honest, if someone's wanting to gain muscle, I, I want them probably at at least 2.2 grams per kilogram, which is one gram per body weight. Uh, and I'll even a lot of the times go higher, 1.5. And so what would that mean on your slide? That would mean instead of 1.2 to 1.7, probably even closer to maybe three grams per kilogram, you know, two, two and a half at the two and two at the least. You can go pretty high there. And we know the rule again, you can watch that protein video or any of my hypertrophy videos to understand the specific actions that protein take on muscle gain. In terms of fat loss, now this is a sneaky one, and I will cover this in my fat loss videos, but you don't want to go low here. In fact, I typically go up really, really, really high. It keeps you full very long, keeps muscle around, which is important to keep your basal metabolic rate up nice and high. It's not that big of a jump, but it's a little jump, and every little thing counts. Uh, and you do to feel great. Um, you can look at Jose Antonio's fantastic work, but they've shown pretty clearly if you go really high on protein, you, you, you don't have any problem losing weight. And so even if you overeat a little bit and you're trying to lose fat, protein is the one to overeat and it's pretty clear, right? So I'll keep that number pretty high. Uh, it also doesn't make people feel like they're starving all day, which, which is really hard if you're trying to lose weight, especially for more than, you know, like a week especially or even a month. You don't want to be deprived and scarce that long. In competition, though, depending on the competition, I'll go down. Why? Again, if it's an eight-month baseball season, I'm not going down on protein. But other sports that are maybe a month or two shorter, 
yeah, okay, it might help us with a little bit of muscle damage, but what we really care about in season is energy and competition. And so if I can't afford to go up in calories or you know, food in the stomach, I wanna keep those carbs really, really high and even fat potentially high. And so I will go down in protein. The same like in literally like the middle of a race, I don't need protein in the middle of a race. What I need are carbohydrates for the most part or competition in the middle of a game. And so I, this is the one time where I will take protein down low or even lower. Um, could be a lot lower than that actually. Just because if we need to make sure we're hedging a lot of carbs in the system to recover or to be able to train again, compete again, whatever we're doing. And again, this is really difficult because depending on the sport, it could change pretty drastically. But then in non-competition, we're going back up, right? Keep full, keep recovered, uh, stay nice and healthy. So here are the specific numbers for you. If you like concepts better, which I like to encourage, I've kind of changed it into some arrows and you can just see what we're basically doing. So we'll just run through each category one more time really quickly and then we'll get you out of here. So for muscle gain, we're not really changing fat that much, but we're going, you know, we're going, oops, sorry. We're gonna go make sure our carbohydrates are nice and high and you can either keep your protein where it is or go up a little bit, but really um, you could have a, I should probably change that first arrow on the fat there, but you could even have a little modified um, increase in fat for your muscle section as well. For fat loss though, maybe a little bit of change in fat, but not necessarily a ton. Probably drop the carbs and keep the protein nice and really high. In competition, a lot more fat, a lot more carbohydrates, and either don't move or drop your protein. And then when we get out of competition, again, make sure you're at the lower level of that fat, drop your carbs quite a bit, and then keep your protein nice and high. So that's it. Again, that's periodized nutrition. There's a ton of other ways to do it. Just wanted to highlight how you should think about food and how you should alter it based on what your goals are and what your adaptations that you're searching for, uh, what else is going on in the person's life and how they're feeling. So just some starting places. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If uh, you wanna learn some more about any of these, each individual topics, you're welcome to see any of my five minute or my 25, or sorry, this is 25, or my 55 minute versions. And now most of you, especially my students are probably happy because you're like, dang, I signed up for a 25 minute video here and we're out of class early today. All right, thanks for all the love and support. Uh, it, it's crazy when I look at the numbers, it's like a 99% positive comment and thumbs up thing on YouTube, which is absurd. So thank you so much, I really appreciate it. This is the best way to continue to get this quality, uh, scientifically based information out. So thank you for doing your part. I'll continue to do my part and make these videos and I appreciate you helping me share the message and post these things around. All right, go get your food on. Go get, go get lunch. Go have some vegetables or meat or whatever the hell you want. Or ice cream, I don't really care. Go tell your mom you love her. That'll, be, that'll go good. That's good. Tell your mom you like her. Yeah. <laughs>